Okay, so I mentioned in an announcement what happened. Um, we couldn't record our in-class work because of internet issues. And as I had hoped to get this recording up yesterday, but that didn't end up being possible. So let's go through the problems that we did in class um, on Tuesday. So number two, well, everything here is continuous, so we could just stick negative two in, except that doing that gives us a division by zero error. So the trick with rational functions, when you have a division by zero error, is to factor and cancel and then try again. And you might still get a division by zero error, in which case the limit doesn't exist. But that doesn't happen here. We get a negative one fourth. Was problem two. And the next problem we did in class was six. Again, if we just plug four in, um, if we didn't get a division by zero error, that would be valid. Everything's continuous, but we do get a division by zero error. So the trick we learned for this situation is to multiply by one, but to write one in kind of an odd way. You look at the square root and you have addition or subtraction and you reverse it. So the square root minus became the square root plus. And the point of doing this is that this will simplify this numerator. It will get rid of the square root. Positive two times the square root and negative two times the square root will cancel. And we have an x minus four. In the denominator, we also have an x minus four. And now if we plug in four, we no longer get a division by zero error. Let me see, I see I went slightly out of order. We did five in the classroom two. So if you plug in four here, you get a division by zero error. You also get a zero up here. Zero divided by zero, we sort of brushed in this in the last section of chapter two. This could represent anything. The limit might exist. The limit might not exist. If the limit does exist, there is no way to know what it is without doing further work. Here, if we plug zero in, we get four divided by zero. This is a determinate form. This limit does not exist. But if you didn't see that immediately, or if you don't remember that section so well, 
we'll try the same trick up here that we tried down here. So this time it's addition becoming subtraction. And we still want, we still get the cancellation. X minus four still wipes out this X minus four. I'm being sloppy with my notation here. There should be a limit there. But the limit as x minus four of this, well, you still get the division by zero error. If you plug four in, the limit really doesn't exist. Eight. Sometimes there are topics that are kind of awkwardly positioned in the sense that they're important enough that you genuinely do have to teach them, but not important enough that you use them on a day-to-day -day basis. And those topics are the hardest for students, of course, because it's hard to learn material that you're not using. So you can be sort of blindsided by it when it shows up on a test. It's the squeeze theorem that says that if one function is stuck between two other functions and you're trying to take a limit and the limit of the smaller function, the cosine is continuous and the limit of the bigger function are the same. That is to say, this is going to one and this is going to one. Then the function stuck between them is also going to one. 8b, if the right-hand limit is one and the left-hand limit is one, the two-sided limit is one. Remember that a two-sided limit exists if the left and right-hand limit exist and are equal to each other.